It's funny because I have classes set up on forgiveness. I do private sessions on forgiveness and I even do talks on forgiveness. And much of the last 20 years of my life have been focused on the experience of forgiveness. And yet when someone asks me to directly name what is forgiveness, I often find myself lacking the words. And I think it's because it's such an un untangible thing. It is more of a felt sense inside of our body that has an impact on everything that we do. So it's easier for me to describe it actually from an energetic or shamanic point of view. And so let's give that a go and see how that resonates with you. If you can imagine one particular issue or wound or wrong that somebody has done towards you and know that Every experience that has impacted your life has this energy cord and the energy cord is connected to you. That if you are blaming somebody for this wound um, and holding them responsible for some of your life experience or some of your suffering or some of your story, then this energy cord is actually pulling power from you. Right? Our aim or our goal as conscious and present human beings is to learn how to clean and clear and bring into balance everything we're in relationship with. And so that means all of the energy cords that we're carrying um, as we become aware of what is heavier out of balance. And so with forgiveness, when we have one of these really heavy cords, whoever it is that did us wrong, um, we're losing power to that experience again and again and again, even though it's something that might have happened a really long time ago. For myself, in healing the homicide of my mother, it was when I became aware that I had this energy cord connecting me to her killer that I felt for the first time in 10 years that I had power and I could do something about the anger, the pain, or the suffering that I was going through. Um, I had spent many years grieving and, and releasing my loss of her, but because this man had killed himself in jail, I had never really expressed any of my anger towards him. Um, and so that energy cord was really heavy. And once I was conscious that it existed to begin with, because that had never even occurred to me before, and this was around in uh, 2005, uh, 2006, then it gave me a sense of empowerment that somehow I could bring my energy back, I could clean and clear this cord. And of course, often our instincts are like, just cut that cord, you know, we wanna cut that shit out, we don't wanna to have to carry that anymore, we wanna get rid of all of these things that are heavy. However, what ends up happening, unless we come into a place of resolution with what is within these cords that we're connected to, it will just grow back. You cannot cut off all of the painful experiences in your life or ignore them or pretend they don't exist or deny that they exist. It just doesn't have um, uh, sustainability, right? We just end up trapping ourselves or poisoning ourselves again or getting sicker later in life. And so if you want to come at your um, personal growth from a place of conscious awareness, it's recognizing that this energy cord exists and then realizing that there's something that you can do within yourself in order to bring it into balance. And so part of your self-inquiry, once you're aware of that, it's not just, okay, here's this cord, I'm gonna forgive this, I'm gonna let it go. You know, that's akin to slapping a positive affirmation on top of a negative experience and expecting it just to whoosh, disappear. It doesn't work that way. What you can do is start to ask yourself, what do I need to bring this into balance? Um, do I need to express my anger? Do I need to express my victim self? Uh, do I feel like this person is still holding some of my power? And, and how do I get it back? You know, I often use a shamanic journey in order to support people with that. Um, in my five-part forgiveness series, I actually help people to transform into the energy body of a wolf. And instead of being the prey, they turn into the predator in order to gather their power back. And, and through the expression of anger and telling the truth about revenge and our own victim self, we generally come into a place where we're more capable of seeing the other.
And this experience of seeing the other is really crucial. Um, getting curious about who they are, where they came from, what brought them uh, into the experience of becoming the person who hurt you, or in my case, hurt my loved one. And how can your understanding of that help you to see their humanity? And that's what you're seeking. You're not seeking to excuse the act that they did. You're not seeking to say it was okay for whatever harm happened. More to recognize the humanity within the person that makes them more than the perpetrator. Right? That the perpetrator action isn't all of who they are. There's also a human in there. Um, those are some of the basic steps in coming into a place of forgiveness within yourself and continually aligning your day-to-day -day experience with, um, uh, with what is freedom. Right? So freedom is kind of your goal or your outcome, if you will, noticing that this heavy thing holding you back or this pressure, or this fear that's bogging you down it is also trapping you in your life, so you're going to feel stuck and incapable of moving forward. So freedom is the goal that you're seeking, then it's doing that work within yourself with forgiveness to move forward in a good way. Uh, and in a final note of passing, something that so inspired my journey with forgiveness the, is that on my mother's bathroom mirror at the time of her death was the following quote, I forgive myself, I forgive everyone, I am free. I mean, what are the chances of a woman who is brutally raped and murdered having that affirmation on her bathroom mirror? And so a lot of my work in forgiveness is to um, offer up honor to my mother's legacy and the possibility that there's nothing that can happen that is so big uh, that we cannot forgive.